welcome to the Story Palace. Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then let's begin. This story is called The Crocodile Who Lost His Teeth. Written by E. V. Parker. Illustrated by Beth Puller. And read by me, Sue Elliot Nichols. Once upon a time, there lived a crocodile called Cedric. Cedric was, in many ways, like any other crocodile. But in one way, he was not. You see, Cedric the crocodile had a sweet tooth. Now, I don't mean he had a tooth that was made out of a sweet. I mean, he liked sweet treats so much that he would eat them all day long if he could. And one day, that's exactly what he did. It was a bright and sunny afternoon at the Billabong and all the other crocs were playing a game of scare the verticals. Verticals are what crocodiles call people because they spend so much of their time vertical, sitting upright or walking, while crocodiles spend most of their time horizontal, lying on their bellies or swimming. Cedric watched as his sister swam gracefully up beside a small rowing boat, gently took the dangling fishing line between her pointy teeth and tugged. The fisherman sprang into action, reeling in what he thought was a fish. He peered over the side to get a look at his first catch of the day. And that's when Cassandra the croc popped up from beneath the water with snapping jaws. The fisherman got such a fright that he yelped, fell backwards into the boat and let go of the rod, which dropped into the water with a splosh. Cassandra swam away, sniggering. Then, Cedric spied his older brother, Sid, lurking under the water, not far away from his sister, Cassandra. Sid softly swam up to the grassy bank, waited patiently for the right moment, and then lurched upwards and snapped his jaws at a family having a picnic near the water's edge. The mother, father and two small children screamed and ran away. Sid laughed loudly and high-fived Cassandra as she drifted past. Cedric was not at all interested in their silly games. But what had piqued his interest was something the little girl had left behind when she ran in fright from his brother Sid. There on the bank, sparkling in the sunshine like the most precious treasure, was a cupcake. It was decorated with vanilla icing, rainbow sprinkles and topped with a shiny red cherry. Cedric licked his jaws. (laughs) A delicious cupcake, just for me! (laughs) He glanced round, submerged his long body under the water except for his eyes which were conveniently positioned on the top of his scaly head, and quietly swam, tails swishing towards the delectable looking cupcake. Cedric climbed up into the bank, nudged the cupcake up onto his snout, then slowly and carefully slid back into the water. It was a balancing act just to keep the delicious cake from falling into the billabong. Steady, Cedric thought to himself. Steady, one, two, three, go! And he tossed the cupcake up into the air, opened his jaws as wide as he could and swallowed the sweet treat in one go. Mm -mm. Yum, yum! He closed his eyes and grinned triumphantly. Sid swam up next to him. You shouldn't be eating cake, Cedric, not with your teeth. Cedric huffed, oh, don't be silly. Cassandra popped up from under the water. Sugar is not part of our diet, brother. Snout in the air, Cedric sprayed water from his nostrils. <laughs> what do you know about it? Cassandra pointed a claw at Cedric as a cross teacher would. I know that if you eat lots of sugar, your teeth will rot right out of your head. And what use is a toothless crocodile? You can't scare anyone with no teeth. Sid nodded in agreement. Yeah, having lots of teeth is what makes us who we are. Cedric scoffed. Nonsense. Teeth do not make us who we are. And it doesn't matter anyway, because the idea that sweet treats rot teeth is preposterous. That's what verticals tell their young to get them to do what they want. It's absolute bold dash. Sid rolled over in the water, splashing his brother. If you say so, Cedric... Cedric tutted, turned his back and gazed out towards the town. His beady crocodile eyes lit up, for across the road was the most incredible sight in the entire world. I don't need to say so, he grinned. I can prove it. How? 
asked Sid. Yeah, how? Cassandra added. Cedric licked the last of the sweet icing off his jaws. Come with me, you'll see. Sid and Cassandra shrugged at each other and followed their brother up into the bank. Although travelling by land was a lot slower for crocodiles than gliding through the water, Cedric led his brother and sister through the long grass at a steady pace towards the road. The verticals that were walking around gasped and politely moved out of the crocodile's way. This made Cedric feel important. He'd never left the billabong before and he was rather enjoying all the attention. Some verticals had climbed up trees and some had climbed inside their zoomers. Zoomers are what crocodiles call cars. Cedric gave a little wave here and there and smiled widely as they passed girls and boys and mums and dads and verticals called grandparents whose skin was wrinkling, probably from staying in the water for too long. The zoomers had even stopped zooming across the road so that the three crocodiles could cross. Cedric, Cassandra whispered, where are we going? Safely across the road, Cedric stopped in front of a towering building and pointed up at it. We're going in there. What is this place? Sid and Cassandra gazed up at the sign with a lollipop painted on it. What is this place? asked Sid. Cedric nudged open the glass front door and a little bell above made a tinkling sound. It's the bestest, most super duper, totally fantastical place in the whole wide world, he said. Sid and Cassandra followed their brother inside. The woman behind the counter and several customers began to scream and some started waving their hands above their heads. One after another, they rushed out of a side door. Cedric's eyes glittered like stars. This, dear brother and sister, is a sweet shop. Sid and Cassandra glanced around at the rows and rows of delicious candies and chocolates. What are we doing in here? Sid asked. Cassandra had an idea about what her brother might be up to but she hoped she was wrong. Tongue hanging out in anticipation, Cedric turned to his siblings and said, I'm going to eat every sweet in this shop and prove to you that my teeth would never, ever rot out of my head. Cassandra rolled her eyes. Her idea was right. Cedric, I forbid you to eat all these sweets. Even if your teeth do not rot out of your head, you're going to get a stomachache or worse, make yourself sick. No, I won't. Do you just wait and see? And with that, Cedric opened his enormous jaws and began chomping his way through the shelves of sweets. First, he ate all the candy from several glass jars behind the counter. Then he devoured five tubs of strawberry laces, some of which Sid had put on his head like a wig, making Cassandra giggle. <laughs> he licked up ten trays of fudge, sucked up 72 lollipops, munched through 135 chocolate bars and chewed 12 boxes of bubblegum, which got stuck in his teeth, until he blew a ginormous bubble that popped over the shop, making everything pink and sticky. Once all the shelves were empty, wrappers and packets littering the floor, Cedric sat back and patted his scaly tummy. See, I do not feel even the slightest bit sick and my teeth have not rotted out of my head. Cassandra sighed. OK, you win. Sugar does not rot your teeth. Cedric's jaws spread into a smug grin. But just then he felt pain inside his mouth. Terrible pain that he'd never felt before. And all at once, his teeth fell out of his head. Sid's jaw dropped open in alarm as Cedric's snout went as limp as a noodle. More poop! He cried. Frantic, he gathered them up and tried desperately to push them back into his gums one by one, but it was no use. His teeth were gone. Cedric cried and he cried. <laughs> what use is a crocodile? He's lost his teeth. Oh dear, oh dear, said Cassandra. Well, it's no use crying over split teeth. Maybe we can chew your fish up for you. Cedric wailed, crocodile tears streaming. Cheer up, Cedric, said Sid. Perhaps we can find you some new teeth. Cassandra tutted. Don't be ridiculous, Sid. We can't get Cedric some new teeth. Cedric sniffed and stopped crying. 
He picked up a piece of wood from the floor. It had been part of a shelf, which had broken when he rampaged through the shop on his sugar-scuffing quest. He held up the piece of wood. What about toast made of wood? Could that work? It could work, agreed Sid. And Cassandra agreed to help, even though she wasn't quite sure Cedric's plan would work. The three crocodiles emerged from the sweet shop and made their way along the sunny street into a hardware store. Once again, all the verticals inside, including the shopkeeper, ran outside so the crocodiles could do their shopping in peace. <laughs> How kind of them! Although Cedric wished they wouldn't scream every time, it, it would appear that the crocs didn't have to play silly games to make verticals scream. All they had to do was show up. The three crocs set to work finding the materials they needed to make Cedric some new teeth. Cassandra collected the wood, Sid found a hammer, and Cedric returned with a saw. Before long, the trio had fashioned Cedric some rather splendid false wooden teeth. The new teeth were bigger than Cedric's original teeth. Cassandra fitted them into his mouth for him. Right, now we need to test them. Cassandra clapped her jaws. We passed a pit shop on our way. Follow me. Sid and Cedric followed Cassandra to the pet shop. Cedric expected to be greeted with more screaming customers, but he was surprised to find no verticals inside. How odd, he thought. It had not occurred to Cedric that three crocodiles on the loose might be the reason for the evacuation. The crocodiles padded past an enclosure of twitchy rabbits, a cage of unusually quiet birds, and glass cases of jittery hamsters and skittery mice, until they came to the best buffet in town. Rows and rows of fish swimming around in bubbling aquariums. Sid licked his jaws as Cassandra pointed to a fishbowl on the corner with her little orange goldfish happily swimming round and round inside. Cassandra stalked up to the bowl, ready to feed Cedric with a flick of her tail. Cedric opened his mouth wide, ready for the fish. But as soon as he did that, his wooden teeth fell out. Crash! All the goldfish laughed and laughed very loudly. Cedric wailed even more loudly. It's no use, he cried. I lost my teeth and that is that. Um, surprised to hear a small voice, the crocodiles peered over the countertop to find a little vertical girl sitting on the floor reading a book. She got to her feet just a little bit nervously. I think I can help you, she said. But if I do, you have to promise to go back to the billabong. Cassandra looked at Sid and Sid looked at Cedric and Cedric looked at the girl. She said, Agreed? And Cedric nodded his head and said, Agreed. The girl took a deep breath and turned her book around to show the crocodiles. It says here that crocodiles have 64 teeth and they are constantly being replaced. That means a crocodile can go through over 3,000 teeth in a lifetime. Check your mouth. Are there any new teeth growing? Cedric licked his gums and was surprised when his tongue found sharp points. Yes, yes, there are. The girl smiled and nodded. You see, humans lose baby teeth too, but unlike crocodiles, when we have our permanent ones, they don't grow back if we lose them again. So you can't eat sugary things all day? Cedric asked. Not really. Sugar isn't good for our teeth, but we like it sometimes. So we use a toothbrush to help look after our teeth. It might be a good idea for you to use a toothbrush too, if you like to eat sweets, that is. Because once you've gone through your 3,000 teeth, yours might never come back. Thanks for your help, little vertical girl, said Cedric. You're welcome, said the little girl. And she watched as the three crocodiles plodded out of the shop and back along the billabong. Cedric was so happy to have his teeth back that he decided to join in with Sid and Cassandra's games. But instead of scaring verticals, the siblings decided to help them. They shared their fish with the fishermen 
and Cedric, using the broom Cassandra had found at the hardware store, gave teeth-brushing demonstrations to all the children who came for picnics. Cedric was careful about how much sugar he ate too because he did not want to risk losing all 3,000 of his teeth again. He didn't give up sugar completely though because sometimes the families that visited thanked him for teaching their children to brush their teeth with um, with a delicious cupcake or two. The end. Well, I think I'd be absolutely terrified if Crocodile came walking into a shop when I was there, don't you? Maybe not if it was Cedric, the toothless crocodile. I quite liked him toothless, did you? Anyway, that's not quite the end, because here's a message from E.V. Parker. She says, this story was inspired by my father, Beth's grandfather, who is an amazing storyteller. He didn't get any kind of education growing up, so cannot write, but he tells stories to my children like he used to tell me when I was their age. And this is where my love of stories came from. My African primary school teacher, who also told Anansi stories, also inspired me. Oh, I love Anansi stories, do you? Anyway, thank you for listening, and come back to visit the Story Palace again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>